Welcome back, friends. I'm back today with a very cute animation using Polaroid frames. So we're going to go through this very easy to create animation. If you learn anything in this tutorial, don't forget to press that like button, subscribe and turn those notification bells on. And if you want to learn more about Canva, don't forget to join my YouTube channel membership. I go live every week. So let's get started. All right, so I am starting off with a workspace design of 1280 pixels by 720. It is a YouTube thumbnail size, and I'm gonna start off by placing a background on my workspace. So I'm gonna go into elements and I'm gonna go into my recently used, and I'm gonna place this wooden board on my workspace. If you want to use the same type of background, it is paper, wood, poster, old background. Those are the keywords that you would look for to find that design. And you can also pause on that specific slide so you can take a copy and use it later. Now I'm not going to right click and select set image as background because the proportion of my image is not the same as the proportion of my background. And if I do that and try and stretch it out, I'm going to lose part of the background. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to size it out as far as I can, and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to move the second image all the way to the side. And then I'm just going to crop it until it looks seamless. And you might have to just fool around with this just to get that perfect uh, match, but uh, it is possible. So there you go. Now, before we continue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock that image on my workspace so I don't accidentally move it. Okay, and now we're done. So now I'm going to go back to elements and I'm going to search for a, a Polaroid frame. And I'm going to use this one right here. And I'm going to size it because I want to place four right on the left side of my workspace. So I'm just going to grab and make four copies. And I'll make one more and I'll put that right there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these frames and I'm actually going to color the inside of the frame black. So um, I'm going to come up here to the one that has, is multicolored and I'm just going to choose this black charcoal and fill it in. Like when you see a Polaroid, it's kind of got that blackish grayish before it develops. So that's what I want to um, do. And I'm going to do the same with the other frames. I'm just going to fill them in with that same color and until all four are the same. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to make a duplicate and place that duplicate on top of each Polaroid. Like that. And I'm going to now take an opportunity to group all of them. So I'm just going to um, grab all of them separately and group those two Polaroids together. So I'm now going to place some images inside of these Polaroids. So I'm going to grab my first image and that will go into that one. That will go into that one. This one will go into this one and this one is going to go into this one. Now I'm going to look for a tack. So like this, and I'm going to place this tack on top. And when you're um, working with frames, just be careful to move elements by the edges so that they don't accidentally fall into the frame. And you can resize it just to make it look more realistic, like that. And I'll make 
make a duplicate. And I'll put that one here. I'll make another duplicate. And I'll put that one here. Another duplicate. And I'll place this one right here and try and just line them up like that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these Polaroids with the image inside, and I'm going to make them invisible. So I'm going to turn it the or make them transparent, and that way you can see the Polaroid behind. And I'm going to do the same here, and the same here, and the same here. All right. So what I'm going to do now is. I want to make sure that these tacks are in front of all of the Polaroid picture frames. So I'm going to go over to position and I'm going to make sure that they are right on top and they are and that's great. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab each Polaroid and I'm just going to layer them one on top of another like this. And you can arrange them any way you like. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of the slide. So I'll press Control C and I'll press Control V. Now on the second slide, what I'm going to want is to bring that first photo and drag it over here. But I don't want the second, third and fourth tacks. So I'm going to grab this photo and I'm going to rotate it until it's zero degrees, I'm going to grab it and I'm just going to place it right there. Now I'm going to leave these tacks here for now, even though I don't need them. It's just important for us to know what, where they are in terms of the position of the tacks and the Polaroids coming back into the place that they should be. So I'm going to leave them there and at the end I'm going to come back and I'm going to remove them when I need to. So I'm now going to take another copy of the slide. And in here, I'm going to turn up the transparency again, like that. I'll now take another copy of this slide. I'll go to slide number four. And I'm going to grab my next Polaroid. I'm going to twist it till it's zero degrees. And I'm going to move it back up to the top there. I'll take a copy of this and I'll paste it again. And in here, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to turn up the transparency. So again, I'll take a copy, paste, come to my sixth slide. I'm going to fix the orientation till it's zero and I'm going to bring it up here and position it there. I'll take another copy and paste on my seventh slide. I'm going to turn up the transparency all the way up. I'll now make another copy and I'll come to slide number eight and I will rotate it to zero degrees. I'll take another copy and on the final slide, I'm going to turn up the transparency again. So let's go back now to the first slide. So on the first slide, I have these tacks. And I really don't need these tacks, so I'm just going to get rid of them. I'll now go to the second slide 
and I don't need these tacks. So I'm going to get rid of these three, but this one I will need. So I'll leave it there for a minute. There is something else that we do need to do, but I'm going to leave that there for now, just so that I can show you why we need to do it. I'll go to the third slide and I'm going to remove the three because I don't need them. I'll go to the fourth slide and I'll remove the ones on the bottom. Um, again, the ones on the bottom. Sixth slide, only the fourth one. On the seventh one, only the fourth one. And on the eighth slide, we'll leave it like that. I'm now going to add a page transition in between those slides. So I'm going to click that icon that looks like a D and I'm going to select match and move and I'm going to turn up the duration um, maybe to about 1.9 seconds. I'm not sure right now if we need to, we will modify that. And I'm going to also select to apply the transition between all pages, which is this button here that's sitting just behind my video, just behind my face. And that'll be applied to all of the transitions. Let's turn the duration on just so that we know how long every single slide is. And I'm going to change the duration to three seconds and I'm going to apply it to all pages. And we can see now that it's applied three second duration to all of the slides. Let's preview this now. So I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to press the play button just so that we can see what it looks like. Now we can see that as it's playing, the Polaroids are coming up and that pin tack is going from uh, transparent to opaque. And I'm not really liking that. So we're going to change that. So let's go back. Let's select that pin, go to the three dots, and we're going to show the timing of that pin. Now I want the pin to show up after the Polaroid has been placed in position. So I'm going to change the timing of when that pin shows. So I'm going to grab the side of the duration for that pin and I'm going to crop it so that it shows up after the pin like that. And I'm going to do the same for the second pin and the third pin and the fourth pin. And let's see what that looks like now. Now you notice that that Polaroid came in underneath the second one and we're going to change that now. So we're going to close this and we're going to work our way backwards. So we're going to come to the final slide and we're going to go to position. And this is the Polaroid we're looking for right here, which is this one. And we're going to drag it all the way to the bottom or to the last Polaroid. And we're going to do that for the slides. We're just going to drag that right in between, behind all the others so that we're not having that problem. And we're going to stop at 
slide four because once it's on the background, we don't need to worry about the slides coming in underneath. They'll just automatically appear or slide on top of that Polaroid. So let's see what that looks like now. All right, let's now add some music. So I'm going to go into elements and I'm going to search for some music that has piano. And we can preview music by just pressing the play button on the left side here. So I really like this one, so I'm going to add it to the design. Um, so here it is. And if we want to extend it all the way, um, we can just drag it all the way to the beginning. And the other thing that we'll want to do is we'll just want to fade it out right at the end. So I'm going to select it. And when I select it, I'm going to have this toolbar up here. So we can also make it um, turn down the volume a little bit so that it's not so loud. And there's also this option to fade. And I want it to fade out and we'll notice that um, it will have a little triangle that's a little bit lighter showing us when that fading is going to occur. So maybe we'll do it like that. So let's see what that looks like now. Let's add one more page. So I'll copy this page and I'll paste it. And let's add some text. And writing and let's see what that looks like now so let's press the play button that's looking pretty good Well, I hope that you did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to press that like button and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about Canva, don't forget to press that join button next to my YouTube channel name. For now, my friends, I'll say bye-bye. Until next time. Bye now.